good morning cadets today we'll continue the chapter lesson number 4 in the kingdom of pools in the last session we were talking about the message of the chapter and the message given by ak ramanujan is don't be in the company of fools if you are in the company of fools definitely you invite troubles for yourself because these fools are unpredictable they land in trouble and ultimately because you are in their company you also land in trouble the story talks about the kingdom of fools and in that land everything was opposite that is that means people used to sleep during day time in the night they used to work because it was the strict order of the king and minister because they wanted uh, to have some unique laws so they decided that they will sleep during the day time and work during the night and uh, the interesting part of this uh, place was that everything was available from for one duddu whether it is a rice or banana everything was available in one duddu duddu because it has a kannada background so it is a currency in kannada one day a disciple and his guru visit this place and the whole day they wandered and roamed here and there they could not find a single living creature so they were so surprised by evening both guru and shishya or disciple they were tired and suddenly whole town became active because they used to work in the night and they went to a shop had stomach full of uh, food and all and the disciple was very impressed by the place that everything is so cheap but the guru after coming back he thought that this place is not fit for him because he understood he had landed in the kingdom of fools so he shares this with the disciple and tells that let us uh, go back but the disciple was a food holic food holic means a person who loves food so he was a food holic so he wanted to stay there longer and taste a lot of varieties of food because food was very cheap so the guru thought that if somebody has decided to stay he cannot force the disciple so he leaves and the disciple stays there and what happens the disciple has lot of bananas ghee rice wheat and ultimately he becomes like a bull a street side bull bull is very uh, means healthy so now we continue one bright day a thief broke into a rich merchant's house he had made a hole in the wall and sneaked in and as he was carrying out his loot the wall of the old house collapsed on his head and killed him on the spot so one day on a bright day ab you should always remember here day means night because day time everybody is sleeping so usually a thief comes at night when everybody is sleeping but here because it is day time is night the thief came in day time but it is night for everybody he broke into the merchant's house the thief and he made a hole in the wall and he took or looted many things but what happened the wall was old and it fell on his head 
and he was killed. His brother ran to the king and complained, Your Highness, when my brother was pursuing his ancient trade, a wall fell on him and killed him. So, what do you call? The thief's brother proudly went to the king. And you should always remember, we are in the kingdom of fools. So, he told, sir, our ancient uh, uh, trade from our grandfather's time, father's time, we are all thieves. And we were doing our, my brother was doing his business. And what happened? Uh, that wall fell on my brother and he was killed. He complained it to the king. This merchant is to blame. He should have built a good strong wall. You must punish the wrongdoer and compensate the family for this injustice. So though there can be no better example than this, that it is kingdom of fools. A thief should be punished though he has died. See the brother is complaining about a merchant and saying that the merchant should have good strong wall. So now the merchant should be punished. The king said, justice will be done. Don't worry. At once summoned the honor of the house. And it is kingdom of fools. The king does not think about anything. Just look at the picture. And the king told, call that honor of the house. How dare he build such weak wall and the thief has died. When the merchant arrived, the king questioned, What's your name? Such and such, your highness. So the man must have replied, Were you at home when the dead man buggled your house? So uh, the king called and the questioning session started and he asked, When this robbery was being done by that thief, were you in the house? Yes, my lord. He broke in. The wall was weak. It fell on him. So he told, yes, uh, it is uh, night time. Though it was day, but in that kingdom it was night. So I was sleeping and when he came, uh, he, the wall fell on him and he died. The accused pleaded, pleads guilty. Your wall killed this man's brother. You have murdered a man. We have to punish you. Just imagine. How the king is not using his wits and an innocent is going to be uh, made guilty. Lord said the helpless merchant, I did not put up the wall. It is really the fault of the man who built the wall. He did not build it right. You should punish him. So the merchant understood that it is useless to argue with the king. So he came up with a solid argument and he told, Yes, yes, poor thief has been killed, sir, but it is not my fault, king. It is the fault of the person who has built the wall. Please punish him. Who is that? My lord, this wall was built in my father's time. I know the man. He is an old man now. He lives nearby. So... The merchant somehow saved himself and put all the uh, blame on the person who built the wall. And that man has become old. The king sent out messengers to bring the bricklayer who had built the wall. They brought him tied hand and foot. Poor man, he is about to die and now there is a case against him. You there! Did you build the man's wall in his father's time? Yes, my lord, I did. What kind of a wall is this you built? It has fallen on the poor man and killed him. You have murdered him. We have to punish you by death. Now, the poor man does not know that making a wall for somebody invites a death penalty. Before the king could order the execution, so the king was about to hang him. By that time, the poor bricklayer pleaded. He requested, Please listen to me before you give your orders. It is true, I built this wall and it was no good. 
but this was because my mind was not on it so you must have understood in the kingdom of fools everybody is smart everybody is trying to save themselves and this poor man he understood i have to give some solid reason so so see how beautifully he tells i remember very well a dancing girl who was going up and down the street all day with her anklets jingling and i could not keep my mind on the wall i was building you must get that dancing girl i know where she lives <laughs> so he has cooked up a story and he is telling yes uh, when i was young and i was building this wall there was a beautiful girl and she was a dancing girl every morning when i was building the wall she would pass the street and she has anklets anklets are worn ornament worn by the ladies on their feet that is pile so she was jingling jing 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 and i could not look at the wall i was looking at the lady so definitely the wall became weak you are right the case deepens such a silly case and they are telling the case is very deep we must look into it it is not easy to judge such complicated cases so definitely it is kingdom of fools is this a complicated case let's get that dancer where is she the dancing girl now an old woman came trembling to the court and the lady was shivering her hands and legs were shaking did you walk up and down the streets many years ago while this poor man was building a wall did you see him yes my lord i remember it very well so it is a chain of stories everybody is trying to save themselves and she said yes uh, i i remember i had good anklets and i was jingling and i was passing through that street you did walk up and down with your anklets jingling you were young and you distracted him so he built a bad wall now the king was telling because of you he has built a weak wall and a poor thief has died it has fallen on a poor bungler bungler is a person who enters somebody's house forcefully and steals or robs and the bugler and he killed you have killed a innocent man you have to be punished now the lady understood uh, that it is a kingdom of fools so the king will not listen so she has to come out with a brilliant idea so she tells she thought for a minute and said my lord wait i know how i was walking up and down the street i had given some gold to the goldsmith to make some jewelry for me he was a lazy scoundrel he made so many excuses and said he would give it now he would give it then and so on all day he made me walk up and down to his street or house a dozen times that was when this bricklayer saw me it is not my fault my lord it is the damned goldsmith's fault so the lady came up with a brilliant idea and she told yes yes uh, i was going but it is not my fault i had given some ornaments to one goldsmith he was delaying my ornaments every day he will tell come tomorrow come day after so i was going every day so it is not my fault it is the fault of the goldsmith poor thing she is absolutely right thought the king weighing the evidence so in the kingdom of fools you should be having good arguments to survive so the king told yes yes the lady is correct we got the real culprit at last get the goldsmith wherever he is
so the king was convinced with the lady's argument and he summoned summoned means called in the court and all or in, uh, during the old times when the king is calling him to the court or these days if you are going to some court then we have the language summoned the king's bailiffs searched for the goldsmith who was hiding in a corner of his shop and the news will spread and the goldsmith came to know that the lady has put all the blame on on him so the goldsmith was hiding somewhere when he heard the blame or accusation against him he had his own story now the man was al already ready he knew that if i have to say to myself i have to tell something my lord he said i am a poor goldsmith it is true uh, that this dancer came many times to my door i gave her excuses because i could not finish making her jewelry before i finished the rich merchant's order they had a wedding coming and they wouldn't wait you know how impatient the rich men are so finishing the lady uh, had put the blame on this merchant the merchant told uh, yes my lord i was busy making a rich man's jewelry that is why i had to call this lady many times who is this rich merchant who kept you from finishing the poor woman's jewelry made her walk up and down which distracted this brick layer which made the mess of this wall which has now so the king is a good speaker also he is uh, speaking very nicely fallen on a innocent man that is the funniest uh, thing that a thief is called innocent man he had come with evil intention to rob and the king is every time saying a innocent man was killed can you name him the goldsmith named the merchant and he was none other than the original owner of the house whose wall had fallen now the world is where we started from the merchant's wall has fallen and the merchant only had ordered some jewelry and the lady's jewelry got delayed now justice has come full circle thought the king back to the merchant when he was rudely summoned back to the court he arrived crying it wasn't me my father who had ordered the jewelry he is dead i am innocent so he said sir when this jewelry was ordered i was a child my father ordered the jewelry not i but the king consulted his minister and ruled decisively is it true your father is the murderer he is dead but somebody must be punished in this place so the king said no we have a case and somebody has to be punished if your father is dead somebody we have to find out somebody you have inherited everything from that criminal father of yours his riches as well as your sins so if your father has done some pap that is sins you inherit that also along with the property so you have to be punished i knew at once even when i set eyes on you that you were at the roof of the horrible crime you must die so the king said that you have to die you have killed a innocent thief and he ordered a stake to be made ready for the execution so you understand what is a stake uh, uh, they will hang you on that that as the servant sharpened the stake and got it ready for the final impaling of the criminal it occurred to the minister that the rich merchant was somehow too thin to be properly executed on the stake so uh, the rich merchant was very thin and to hang on that you require a fat man so he appealed to the king's common sense and the king was worried about it so no doubt the lesson is called the kingdom of fools here again finally the man was found now they are saying the merchant is thin so he cannot be hanged 
what shall we do he said when suddenly it struck him that all they needed was a man fat enough to fit the stake so a fat man should be hanged the servants were immediately sent all over the town for a man who would fit the stake and the man and the eyes fell on the disciple now the disciple did not listen to the guru and now he has become so fat after eating the ghee and the wheat and bananas and all that he has become round like a football and now he is going to be hanged so everybody's eyes fell on the disciple who had become very round and fat what i have done wrong i am innocent i am a sanyasi he cried and the poor disciple he could not understand that i am new in the place i don't know the people and the king is ordering to kill me what is this i am a sanyasi they that may be true but it is royal command or decree that you find a man fat enough to fit the stake they said and carried him to the place of execution he remembered his guru's words that this is a city of fools you don't know what they will do next while he was waiting for death he prayed to his guru in his heart asking him to hear his cry wherever he was now the disciple understood that his guru was wise that these fools if you are in their company they are unpredictable what they will do next you will not understand and your life is in trouble so he started and remembering his guru and the guru had divya drishti and he saw in his vision because he had magic and he could see far and he could see the future he could see the present and the past he arrived to save his disciple who got himself into the scrape through love of food why the disciple has become this victim because his love for food he was food holic otherwise he would have gone with his guru he didn't did not listen to his guru that is why he was in trouble so always remember never fall in the company of fools because they don't think twice before doing anything and if you remain in a fools company you will also land in trouble because fools are unpredictable